Today we will visit a unique place, house number 5 in Kuznichny Line in St. Petersburg, where Fyodor Dostoevsky, the great novelist of world literature, rented an apartment twice in his life. The first time he rented an apartment in this house, at the very beginning of his creative path, and the second time at the very end of his life. His last novel, The Brothers Karamazov, was written here. Dostoevsky was born in Moscow, in a state-owned apartment in a wing of the Marinsky Hospital for the Poor, where his father worked as a doctor. Fyodor Dostoevsky's entire childhood was spent in this hospital. He witnessed numerous sufferings of people there, which greatly influenced his inner world and later on his work. His father had a large library, and Fyodor Dostoevsky spent a lot of time reading books. He was brought up in strictness. His strict father didn't even allow him to play Laptar, the team game which resembled baseball, considering it an indecent game. When Dostoevsky was 16 years old, his mother died of tuberculosis, and his father had begun to live with a maid. This comes as a great shock to the young Fyodor Dostoevsky, who was brought up in traditional family with strict rules. Dostoevsky was educated at an elite private boarding school in Moscow. After graduating from the private boarding school, his father insisted that Fyodor Dostoevsky continue his education at the main engineering school in St. Petersburg. But young Dostoevsky did not like this profession. His passion was literature, but to disobey his father's opinion was not accepted in society. And Dostoevsky entered the main engineering school of St. Petersburg. In spite of this, Dostoevsky continued to write works. The first work that made Dostoevsky famous was Poor People. This work created a furor in the literary society of St. Petersburg. Literary critics even began to call Dostoevsky the new Nikolai Gogol. But after the first success, Dostoevsky became dizzy with success and then followed a series of failures, which caused a wave of criticism. During this period of his life, Dostoevsky even became the object of much ridicule. At the same time, Dostoevsky became fascinated by socialist ideas, ideas of equality. He began to attend meetings of the Russian utopian Mikhail Petrashevsky. Despite the fact that Petrashevsky's club was more of a meeting place for amateur philosophers who discussed the topical problems of Russian life and were not focused on changing the government, all members of the club were arrested by authorities and sentenced to death. The death penalty was later commuted to exile. Fyodor Dostoevsky was exiled to the Siberian city of Omsk. There he first came face to face with imprisoned murderers and thieves, who despised the nobility, including Dostoevsky, even though the exiled nobles cared about the life of the common people and thought about how to make life easier for the peasantry. In Siberia Dostoevsky had his first epileptic seizure. From that time on, Dostoevsky had an epileptic seizure about once a month for the rest of his life. Communication with prisoners of the penal servitude in Siberia also strongly influenced the work of Fyodor Dostoevsky. After the exile and soldiering in the city of Semipalatinsk, the writer would return to St. Petersburg only 10 years later. After the exile, another writer stood before the readers. The work Notes from the Dead House about the life of prisoners at the penal colony will have the effect of an exploding bomb in the literary life of the country. Dostoevsky begins to study the phenomenon of evil, the nature of evil. He likes to look into the human fall. Dostoevsky himself becomes more religious. Dostoevsky's biography is full of evidence of complex and painful relationships with women. Many of the women are reflected in many of Dostoevsky's works. Unsuccessful relationships with women continued in his life until he was married to Anna Sitkina, who was originally his stenographer. She dutifully endured all of Dostoevsky's weaknesses, especially his gambling addiction. Dostoevsky repeatedly lost his last money in casinos. He pawned and repurchased his wedding ring more than ten times. At times when they had nothing to eat, he got into huge debts. His royalties for written works were low. He earned three or five times less than his equal in talent such writers as Tolstoy and Turgenev. The Dostoevsky family couldn't afford to live in St. Petersburg, so they had to live in Europe. What an irony! Dostoevsky's wife's letters contained records of how cigarettes got cheaper as they got further away from St. Petersburg. 
So, for comparison, the fee paid to Fyodor Dostoevsky for the novel The Idiot amounted to 7,000 rubles in 1868. This is a little more than 2 million modern rubles, or about 27,000 American dollars, while the fee for crime and punishment amounted to only 1,000 rubles, that is 7 times less. Subsequently, Dostoevsky gets rid of his gambling addiction. Dostoevsky's view of the world becomes more traditional and religious. It seems that there is not even a trace of his former socialist ideas left. Five of Dostoevsky's most recent novels deal with the subject of murder. The most famous of them is Crime and Punishment. But it would be wrong to consider these novels simply as detectives. They are psychological dramas in which the murderer searches for the god in his place in life. His works are also philosophical works, so it's not surprising that the writing of famous philosophers of Dostoevsky's contemporaries such as Friedrich Nietzsche and John Paul Sartre contain repeated references to Dostoevsky. Toward the end of life many famous writers slipped into a kind of preaching in their works. Dostoevsky was not an exception. Many of what Dostoevsky said is controversial, but like any genius, he is not sinless. Dostoevsky lived 59 years, but his life was very rich and filled with many different events that are reflected in his works.